Well, Jarvis, we are here. Here is the playing round. We are. Right back to familiar territory if you go back to last season. So this is nothing new. And honestly, it's not a shock. I mean, this is kind of we thought this team was going to land because this team ends the regular season at 41 and 41, being just who we thought they were, Mm -hmm. a 500 team. And so they go up to Boston and granted, the Celtics had their second string players in. The Hawks had a lot of second string players in as well. So we understand Typical situation, some random dude, X-Factor dude comes out and gets a triple-double, and the triple-double comes through what? Threes. Okay. With an emphasis so on triple. Was- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Triples on triple. Gracious Lord. So we knew that was going to happen, and now here we are once again, but they're staring the heat in the face a little bit sooner than they did last year because they got out of the play-in round, got into the first round of the playoffs, and, of course, we're down in five. This year they have to face the heat to get out of the play-in round starting tomorrow. So that said, we said earlier, Jimmy Butler is AKA the boogeyman, but really the entire heat squad seems to haunt the Hawks on a regular. Do they even have a real shot at being the number seven seed or more importantly, getting over the hump, first of all, against the heat to put themselves in position for that seven spot. To, if you were if if Nate McMillan was coaching this team, uh, my answer would probably be like nope, uh, because like like how can you expect how can you change your expectations? Because like I said, I have none. I, I'm still sitting right there at none. But when you think about some of the things that are that we've seen in these last 21 games, like you've kind of seen the Hawks kind of evolve somewhat. But you know they'll fall back into who they are because hey, like it's t- it's hard to undo. 82 games like it's hard to undo that in, in yeah. short a uh, short time frame but but I do mm-hmm. believe that when you think about the X factors right and when you think about why the Hawks you know once the Hawks lost they went out and said hey you start hearing the conversations about Trey moving off the ball and you start hearing the conversations about hey the Hawks might be involved in the trade with DeJounte with the Spurs to get DeJounte Murray because you know, you have uh, teams coming at Trey trying to get the ball out of his hands. I want to see what that looks like against this team. And and I think it's it's great that they're going up against the Miami Heat because when you have a situation where you – essentially you went out to kind of combat exactly what they bring to the table. And and right. when you get embarrassed like you did last year and when team, the team just looked lost when Trey mm-hmm. had to get rid of the basketball, yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. this year – with DeJounte playing a little bit off ball, and a lot of times they start the game with DeJounte bringing the ball up the floor. So I'm really yeah. interested to see how um, uh, 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 how the Miami handle that. And and then once they respond, I want to see how the Hawks handle that going forward. And, and that's going to be on Quinn Snyder. Yeah, and I think that's such a great point. On paper, it still looks like they're the boogeyman because anytime Hawks yeah. fans hear the word heat, they get triggered. They get yeah, triggered uh, because uh, they know gotcha. what the issues. <laughs> yeah, they know what the issues were. But the reality is, if you dig into the numbers, especially the numbers after Quinn Snyder took over, it just looks different. It just yeah. looks different. So when you look at the fact that in the last, there were two games, right? It was the fourth and then the sixth. So they played back to backs against the Heat, and in the first game, uh, the Heat only won by eight. And when I say only, that's because when you think about the first game where the Heat won, that was a blowout. So the second game, of course, the Hawks won. But that third game and that fourth game, he'd only won by eight, and then they only won by two. A big part of that is not just, like you said, because Trey and DeJounte were starting to figure out how to play together as far as, hey, Trey, if you see the trap coming, you got somebody that can, you know, you can toss the ball to, and he can then orchestrate and facilitate the offense. But also, one of the things Quinn Snyder is known about, and what was known for and what we're seeing across the entire nine man rotation is rebounding, crashing, yes. the board, crashing the boards on offense so that you have the opportunity for second chance points, which if you get the board and you have an opportunity to score again, and I'm not trying to be basic, but sometimes it's basic basketball IQ that gets you to the next level of yes. play. If you have the ball, you shoot, you miss, you get the ball again. Guess what? That's one more possession for you and one less possession for the other team. And again, yep. While it may sound basic, there's something to be said about the fact that Quinn Snyder's jazz teams that always went deep into the playoffs, part of who they were, was were they were an offensive rebounding team, top five 
almost his entire time there, but in particular the last couple seasons, you know where the Hawks were before Quinn Snyder took over? Middle of the road with offensive yeah. rebounds, about 17th, 18th in the league, second chance points. You know where they have been the last couple of weeks uh, under him? They're now in that top five space, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Second, yeah. in fact, let me actually update that. Second in offensive rebounding percentage. First and second chance points. It makes a difference. And to your point, Jarvis, that those two things that we just mentioned, that's probably why you actually have a thought like, wait a minute, in one game, you kind of like their chances because yeah. that last game was about a month ago. So how much they may be grown to be able to take on a team like Miami. Now, let's say worst scenario, right, Jarvis? Yep. They lose tomorrow night against the Heat, but they got one more shot at it. They got a shot at it, whether they take on the Raptors or the Bulls, and they'll be hosting, which could be a good thing. Uh, right. They actually have had more success this season against the Bulls and the Raptors, more so yeah. than they have in the last couple of seasons. But from the perspective of you know one-to-one -one matchups, do you have a preference on who you want them to see in that next playing game if they don't beat the Heat? You know what? It'll probably have to be the Raptors because, like, they that was one of the teams that they, they held the you know tiebreaker for or against, excuse me. And mm -hmm. the Raptors aren't a good team on the road. They they probably got one of the better home records in the NBA, but you know specifically against contenders like the top four teams. So I, I think that you know if they can get the Raptors at State Farm Arena, I think that the Hawks would yeah. would be cooking with grease and the Chicago Bulls as well. But like I, I like the matchup with the, the Toronto Raptors because, like you said, when you have a guy like Kyle Lowry who's been you know he's just been been you know just been, yeah. uh, I think that the Hawks have some some will have some confidence going into that game knowing that hey we can get this bad boy all we gotta do is just do what we need to do right and i agree actually if if we had to have a preference of who they would match up with i believe it would be the raptors because it seems like it and sometimes jarvis is just a feel but other times it is the numbers and they really have been able to handle their business with the raptors this season which yep. we haven't always seen with them it's it just to me it just always like the raptors were in the building or, or when they were Raptors. The question would be, well, two questions, right? First question would be, what random dude is going to go off on the Hawks? Yeah. What random dude is going to come off the bench? Because yes. the Raptors had a pretty decent bench, right? But then right. the second question was always, who's it going to be? Is it going to be OG Ananobi or Pascal Siakam? Because one of them, if not both, but one of them is definitely going to head not this season. This season, they actually hung tight with the Raptors, and I think they can probably do that again. So, yeah, you love the opportunity to potentially get a game on the Heat. You got close the last two games in the regular season. Who's to say you won't get over the hump tomorrow night? But if you don't, then I can't believe I'm saying this because we said we weren't going to have any expectations. But I can see yes. the Hawks actually beating the Raptors or the Bulls in their own building to get themselves to round one of the playoffs. Yeah, I, I, and I think that, and that's fine. It's okay that you know you can build back up your expectation team, but I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna I'm keep this show balanced. You know what I mean? Like I don't have any expectations. That's what it is. What it is. I know I just laid out something that could possibly <laughs> build it, but like I'm done. Right. Like I am so done. Like I want to see some good basketball. Hopefully, if I don't, you know, I'm not gonna be upset. So hey, that's just how the Hawks have trained my brain this year so yeah i well, i think i'm look i'm looking forward to it don't be don't get me wrong but as far as expectations go hmm, hmm, meh, hmm, yeah, yeah, fair enough it, 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 <laughs> look it, it's fair it's fair it, i believe that one I'm, I'm just gonna leave it alone like i'm not gonna even um i'm not gonna even go there with you because i do understand it's monday t you know hey, what i'm saying you know how this is a season is, yeah. where at least <laughs> It's, it's right, right. No, it is what it is. But at least this is a season where the Hawks can finally say they won the series against the Raptors. So that's why I was kind of giving them just a little bit of deference, although we do know one of those games is overtime. But A.J. Griffin seems to play quite well against his dad, just as an example. And yes. some of those players who weren't given a prominent role back in January, the last time the two teams played, we're seeing much better results from them in much more time. So that could make a difference as well. But if you want to know, we're of course just looking at what the Hawks are going to do 
in the play in round and hopefully the playoffs, but locked on sports today, they're looking across the entire board of what's yes. going on in the NBA playoffs. So if you want to know more about the whole scene or you want to see them and what their reaction is to the NBA play in and the NBA playoffs, don't forget to check out locked on sports today. They have some really cool stuff, just like our FTC. They have their take of the day. So they'll give you their reaction and maybe their thoughts too on whether or not they think that, the Falcons are playing chestnut checkers when it comes to Will Levis or what that's going to be, or whether some of these ticky tack injuries with the Braves are going to come back to haunt them. So don't forget if you go and check out, which I hope you do check out ATL day ones on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast, the next stop is locked on sports today.